So for our very first ship request, we've got the Orkin. This is what you guys wanted to see, especially with tier eight clan battles coming up. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this ship. I really hadn't played it really at all before. So it's getting me excited to play the game again. I really do enjoy different play styles and the Orkan definitely is that. This ship doesn't have a lot of HP. It doesn't have the best DPM, doesn't have the best concealment, although it's pretty good. And of course, no smoke, but we give up that smoke to gain the radar gimmick. So a ship that is incredibly powerful at getting information for the team. But the battle impact really does rely on that information gathering. You're not gonna be farming from a smoke screen. You're really not wanting to even open water gunboat because you're not even particularly fast. Fortunately, this ship does have 360 degree turrets, so you're always gonna be able to have your guns on target. And this is a great example of early game Orkin play, where we're pushing a cap aggressively, we spot out a radar cruiser, and we run away, right? But we don't run away so far that we get outside of his radar range, because it's important to know once he's used his radar. We do take a bunch of AP pens there, unfortunately, but this guy's turning broadside to our team, and hopefully our team is going to at least help do some damage. And sure enough, there it goes. Our heal will allow us to come back into games, much like I talked about with the Huron, where we have a heal. So over the long run, assuming we're taking good engagements, we're gonna outlive a lot of our opponents. Even with the relatively low starting HP pool uh, for tier eight, it's still pretty good considering we have these heals as long as we use them. Now that the radar has been used, we can push very aggressively in here. The ACAP's been taken by the enemy team, we know there's a DD in here, and this is what we're hunting. This ship is a destroyer hunter through and through. But because of that kind of weakness with the HP, you gotta be careful with the engagements you take. It's not really like the Huron where you have so much HP for your tier that you kind of feel like just pushing in and bullying people. Here you do have to be a little bit careful, and there's some pretty nasty DDs and even light cruisers at tier 8 that can really chunk out the HP quite quickly. So you do have to watch out for that. But we push in, smoke screens really don't mean a lot against an Orcan, so we do use our radar, and hopefully our teammates behind us are gonna get some damage in. Doesn't really look like they were ready for it though, unfortunately. So in clan battles, of course, the Orcan's gonna be extremely powerful because of the information gathering and the hopefully <laughs> Good coordination of teammates trying to shoot at the things that you're radaring and spotting. Of course, with a seven and a half kilometer radar, you can radar from stealth. So there's an element of skill involved with that. You can spot people without ever being spotted yourself even. So I do push in aggressively to try and kill this DD. We do cap the uh, point here. And a little while later, we push in and try and take him out again. This is kind of what I'm doing in random battles. I know that I'm not going to have the insane damage games in the Orcan, but I'm really looking to take destroyer engagements, especially if they're a smoking destroyer, right? Where he smokes up and then we just radar through it. And it's a really, really easy kill to secure. And that's kind of typical Orcan gameplay. It's not a ship that's going to top damage numbers. That's, that's for sure. These torpedoes are awful, by the way. I hadn't really mentioned them. They're reasonably quick and they have a decent reload, but the damage is very low. And of course you only have four of them. I do like to chuck them into typical choke points, right? So people like to go to this island in this map. So may as well dump the torps there. And notice how I'm pushing in reasonably aggressively trying to take an engagement with an enemy destroyer. And I'm in a position where I know I can just turn out and kite away. I don't wanna be fully committed into these early engagements. I wanna be able to get away because over the long run, that heal is really gonna help us out in a lot of these DD engagements. So we run into a Yukakaze who, yeah, pretty unfortunate for him, is going to get radared. And even though I don't have a ton of teammates here, we are actually gonna manage to DPM him out. He does have support though, so it's important to keep in mind that we want to be dodging as much as possible. So I'm using my speed boost to reverse, to go forward. I'm using my rudder to try and throw off their aim as much as we possibly can. And we're doing a pretty good job of that. Um, but don't think this is the tankiest DD just because we're not taking a ton of damage here uh, This thing definitely can go down very very quickly But that radar is just an absolute powerhouse and dealing with this ship is extremely tough as another tier 8 DD And I know in clan battles. It's probably pretty frustrating to deal with this kind of radar as well 
I think that it's important to note that I'm not getting greedy for damage here. I'm not trying to take a long distant engagement with this Onlen, the other tier 8 uh, pan-European DD, uh, because I want to save that HP for better engagements. I'm trying to take smart engagements in this ship. So I almost had a solo warrior also while trying to get footage for this video. <laughs> and I say almost because, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to lose this at the last second. Notice the score timer at the top of the screen. They're going to pass us some points. Unfortunately, there's a minute left in the game and they have two caps. So I couldn't just wait the timer out. So I need to kill someone. Notice the Harakaze is the lowest on the enemy team. So that's who I need to kill. We do spot out the Alaska. We know he probably is just gonna pop his radar as soon as he gets spotted. So I'm gonna turn away and try to hide behind this island. They're in the cap. I have to hope this is the destroyer. I'm gonna save my radar for the last possible moment, meaning my radar lasts, what, like 15, 20 seconds? I'll pop it at 25, 20 seconds to try and give myself the best chance at spotting him. So that's what we're at right now. I put the island between myself and the Alaska and the only way to win is to kill the DD. So our radar, and unfortunately nothing. The Alaska catches up to us and finally radars us back. So unfortunately, that means that we're probably gonna die. But the Harakaze does push into our, sm our radar and we do manage to take him out, putting us ahead on points. But he manages to trade us out with four seconds left. Four seconds, ah. So close, I nearly clutched this one out. I was pretty happy with the results still. Um, I didn't play the best earlier on. This was uh, this was a very early game for me. <laughs> I was still waking up, but pretty solid, pretty solid result. This ship can be pretty good. So now that you know a little bit about how I like to play this ship, let's jump into a live game and give you a bit of an idea of the thought process throughout a game, how I want to play this ship. Unfortunately, we did get the same map as I already showed you and the same side. So. It is a really good play over here to push aggressively, but in such a way where you take an angle about like this, spotting out the open water ships down here. And if you get into an engagement with a destroyer, well, you just can easily turn away and you're not really risking too much while also getting a lot of information for your team. On this map, of course, it's all about holding this choke point and that's really relatively easy to do. Um, but it's very important in the late game to not get flanked from the one, two, three lines. If you get a crossfire through here and up here, it's just lights out for your team. So it's really important that we are holding or at least contesting this side. And it looks like we have a lot of teammates coming here with us. So that's going to help me to hopefully deal with whatever enemy DD we have to deal with and potentially also win us this game. So we see a York, which means there is also some enemy presence here pretty close, right? In the example that I gave earlier, they didn't have a lot of people here. So I'm gonna play a little bit more passive and uh, just wait and see. Torpedoes are up. People like to go to islands, man. It's a pretty common spot. So that's what we're gonna go to. And this Z23 has horrible concealment. So even though we have what, 5.9 conceal, which is just decent for a tier eight DD, um, we can outspot this guy. And we can actually do something kind of funny where <laughs> we can just chase him. <laughs> I don't have the DPM to kill him right now. I really don't. But um, what I can do is just keep him eternally lit. <laughs> you know, and eventually I will have to break off this attack. But uh, for now, this is pretty hilarious and it's working quite well. We do have to be careful if they have any other DDs, but they've all been spotted at this point. So we're, we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty all right. The York is turning into us, so unfortunately we do have to break off here. Use my speed boost to try and not get spotted, hopefully. <laughs> and look at all this information we're gathering, right? Like, that's the thing, that's the thing. The battle impact here really is information gathering, right? And there we go, York is dead, and this Z suddenly has a lot less support. Now, a smoke cruiser smoking up, well, we're going to dump torps towards them and then chase down this sea a little bit more. <laughs> right, and you'll see stuff like that more in clan battles, I'm sure. Oh, is he going to turn into me? Or are we just going to chase him to the corner of the map? <laughs> see, I don't have to take this engagement. But what I am doing is I'm creating so much space behind me, right? Like, it's so easy for my team to push in behind me. 
Like this is the dream. If you're a brawling battleship player, this is the dream. Right, so the Z's gotten t tired of me just, you know, chasing him. So he's turned back. And uh, <laughs> if he spots me, then we'll get into the instant engagement. We'll start going. But uh, I mean, his guns aren't even looking at us. Oh, we landed some torps. Nice. And notice how I'm far enough away that this guy really doesn't have much support. So we're going to try and kill him now. Hopefully our teammates will help us out a little bit. But this is just, I mean, it's just outplaying people, right? It's just straight up outplaying people. My aim is apparently trash, but notice how if he wants to smoke, he can smoke all he wants, right? He's got a hydro gimmick for us, but we have a radar gimmick. And since none of his teammates are actually anywhere near, we're actually dark while shooting right now, which is pretty hilarious. And we might not be able to kill him here just because our DPM is a little bit lacking, but this ship is incredibly strong. It's not gonna do huge damage numbers, but it's a very, very strong ship. Very strong. We know we know he has his Hydro up, so we're not gonna push into him. Um, but yeah, we have already more than won that engagement. That guy's not gonna have very much battle impact at all. And the enemy team has a lot of ships coming here, lots of battleships. So it's actually really good that we've done a lot of damage to that DD, right? Unfortunately, well, it's pretty even so far, honestly. I just don't want to get into this uh, radar, or the hydro, sorry. But I'm going to just stay around, you know, because I would like to kill him, right? Like, that is the goal, of course. I do want to take him out. We gotta keep in mind there could be a Gnevni coming. There's torpedoes coming as well. So things to watch out for, certainly. Okay. We got ourselves a smoke cruiser. Seems like he's slowing down for smoke. He's probably gonna die, but that's a decent spot to put our uh, torpedoes as well, since, you know, the Gnevni could be there as well. And yeah, our team gets them. Nice. So, I wish I would have killed that Z, but, uh, oh, we can see the Nevni's in uh, smoke there. So we can go take him out, too. <laughs> right? Like, it's just all about information and controlling the map with this ship. It's pretty fun. If you like more tactical games, it's a pretty fun experience. It's not going to do crazy damage numbers, though. The DPM, no smoke to farm out of, isn't just, it's just not gonna allow you to do that. And I'm pushing here a little bit to try and catch this Z off guard. Just a little bit. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go too far, but just enough that maybe we can take him out. We know we outspot him anyway, so I might be able to kill him. I probably could have blind shot into his smoke screen, now that I'm thinking about it. All right. Pop our smoke, or our uh, speed boost. Might take some pain from his uh, battleship friends. They might not be ready for this, though. But there we go. And just like that, we turn away. And, oh, look at that. The Nevni is pretty low already. <laughs> and I've got a heal to deal with some of the incoming damage, but I'm going to wiggle as much as possible, trying to avoid as much damage as I possibly can. Yeah, and they're, uh, they definitely want to kill me. <laughs> I don't blame them. I don't blame them, but there we go. And then we can use our heal to come back a little bit on HP. I mean, we're already way above this Gnevni as far as HP is concerned. And that's how, I mean, that's how you just win flanks, honestly. Like our battleships are pretty healthy still. I mean, it's open water Boise, which is not going to really go all that well. But, I mean, what are these guys going to do? If they push in, I can still use, even though these torps aren't amazing, pushing battleships are very easy to torpedo, right? So, we can definitely do that. They're reasonably quick. Right? 76 knots is pretty fast, even though the damage output isn't quite there. So, what do you think this guy's going to do? See? Like, that's all you got to think about. What's, what's this guy's play? Is he just pushing? Seems like he's just pushing. He'll probably stay angled to our uh, battleship here. 
Our team will probably be able to take him out. See, I don't want to open up here. Not really. There's really no need right now. We're waiting for him to, you know, really commit to something. That's kind of the idea. All right, he still hasn't fully committed to this turnout. He could always turn back in, so I don't want to launch Torps here. Our Atlantico is kind of taking a bit of a beating, isn't he? I'm going to put my Torps there, because my guess is this guy's going to try and swing out and get his Torps off for the R Atlantico. So that's why I'm going to put my Torps and see if that works. Alright, I mean, he's broadside to uh, our team, so he should die anyway. But uh, it looks like my Torps aren't quite quick enough. I kind of underestimated how fast the Z10 is. Unfortunately. It was the right idea. It was the right idea, it was just poorly executed. So they're still pushing this flank, but they don't have they don't have the DD information, right? And I guess the problem with the Orcan really is it's difficult to impact positions like this, right? It's it's very difficult to uh, you know, be really effective in these situations where we don't have a smoke to farm from. We should keep in mind there, Nevni might be pushing up through here to try and get some Torps on our guys. That is a possibility. I'm trying to always consider, like, what would I be doing if I was the enemy? You know? Or maybe he's just in his smoke farming. <laughs> probably the more likely event. So that's probably going to just be a trade. the Harlem's turning away. Seems fine. So, you know, not a lot of damage, but I'm in a position where I really, really controlled this flank. And the enemy team did push, and I could have open water gunboated some more. I, I probably should be. If I'm going for better averages or I'm trying to do, you know, PR grinding, right? Obviously, I should be farming more, but this kind of safe information gathering play is really strong for winning games and if you're playing this ship in clan battles you should always be thinking how can i get the most information possible without risking my ship you know and you can risk a bit of hp to get information but it's not something you want to say i'm full committed in for this information right that's not what you want to be doing Pop my radar because he's going around an island, so I just want to keep him lit up, so hopefully I can kill him. And sure enough, we do. Just like that. It's a very hard ship to deal with. Very, very difficult ship to deal with. If you're playing... If, if you play smart, this thing's very hard to deal with. But, you know, if I overcommit into something, this HP pool just evaporates. Because we're not the fastest at all. And we do lack some DPM. It's not like it's that bad compared to other tier 8 DDs, but if you start to see tier 9s especially, it can be a little bit rough. So, a bit of a tactical game. Uh, not the highest damaging one, but we definitely contributed to that win. And going after DDs like that is always extremely valuable for your team. Now, as for the way I've built this ship, of course, we're going for maximum gunboat kill destroyer mode, right? So concealment, we're taking superintendent to get us more heals and more radars. We definitely, we desperately need survivability expert. It's so crucial because the base HP pool is so low. Um, last stand, of course, and prevent and maintenance. I'm taking incoming fire alert because it can help you dodge a little bit if you're focused on your DD engagement. You can see this little alert come up and then, uh, you know, use your rudder shift and maybe your speed to uh, hopefully dodge some of those longer range salvos from supporting ships. Adrenaline Rush is always going to be good. And because we don't have smoke, Fearless Brawler is excellent. If we had a smoke screen, a lot of times main battery and AA specialist can be more impactful since you're just always getting the 5% buff. But since we don't have a smoke and we're probably being spotted anyway in these DD engagements, Fearless Brawler is just really, really solid. As far as equipment goes, we definitely want concealment. Uh, no surprises there. 
And I want propulsion mod since there are times where I'm slowing down and using my speed to uh, either dodge shells or just to position my ship. And potentially dodging torps, it's really nice to have propulsion mod since there is no hydro here. Uh, aiming systems, because we are purely focused on those guns and DD engagements, and it works out pretty well. Honestly, I had some fun playing Orcan. Make sure you guys leave whatever ship you want to see me play. It can be literally anything in the game uh, in the comments below, and I'll play whatever is up most upvoted. I'm really excited for more ship requests because Orcan is a ship I just literally never play, and it's never on my radar as like, oh, I'm going to play this. It could be fun. Uh, but I actually enjoyed my time with Orcan. It's a very different play style, but very rewarding. Uh, definitely a tactical style of ship. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.